Anyway, this past weekend, uh, my assistant producer, Sam Arbizo, and myself, we attended the Maker's Fair. That's actually down in San Mateo, California, down at the fairgrounds. And here is what we saw. Hey, we're here at the San Mateo County hey, Fairgrounds <laughs> for the third annual Make Zines Maker's Fair 2008. This show is really a combination of not only arts and crafts, but also lots of cool technology and tons of hands-on, get-your-fingers-dirty kind of fun. Great for families, great for kids, and there's some terrific food. I can smell it cooking right now. Let's dive inside and take a look around. Okay. Jesse? Yeah. Um, this is the project is called Orb Swarm um, or Swarm. Um, it's a, we have four here. Um, there are six total. Um, they're uh, semi autonomous rolling robot vehicles. Um, they have, they're, most, they're designed to be sort of a uh, robotic performance art. Right now, um, because of the confined space that we're in, um, they're remote controlled. Uh, we're controlling them over a, a, a Zigbee remote. Um, is there a way for the individual units then to interact with each other yeah. autonomously? That's that's what we're working on. Uh, we have a uh, one of them has a, uh, a, a faster processor board on it um, and has a GPS and an IMU, and we're working this summer towards making them semi-autonomous so that they can interact with each other. Could you tell us a little bit about the vehicle right behind us? Well, this is a, uh, an entry into the DARPA Urban Challenge. So uh, the primary goal for the vehicle is to be able to drive itself in traffic situations in an urban environment. Now, compared to the original Grand Challenge that was an outdoor, through the desert type of navigation, the Urban Challenge really was a, a city-like environment? Exactly. It was an abandoned Air Force base. They had uh, um, probably 35 other robots at the same time, uh, but also professional drivers and cars going through normal sorts of traffic uh, situations, four-way stops, merging into moving traffic, that sort of thing. What sort of technologies are required to create a vehicle that can do that kind of navigation in an urban environment? Well, we have uh, GPS for our primary navigation. We have inertial navigation to tell us which way we're going. Um, we could also use the roll pitch and yaw on it if we were a performance vehicle, but the Scion XB doesn't get that fast. Um, we have lasers to uh, uh, tell us if there are any vehicles around us that we need to avoid, and we have a stereo vision camera to do sensing of uh, uh, lanes and that sort of thing. So, And it runs Java top to bottom all the way through the microcontrollers. So. About how many computers are actually on board on a system like this? Um, we have a user interface computer just because our main computer is, uh, is headless. We have a, uh, uh, all the logic is really going through one computer, um, which is just an EPM Mini ITX board. Um, and that controls everything. We have a backup computer just in case we have problems with the main computer. And then, uh, and then we have a couple of microcontrollers. Any plans upcoming for where this vehicle will be appearing or performing in terms of, uh, is it doing any more navigation anytime soon? Well, we will be at Java 1. Uh, we'll be in Sun's Pavilion for that, and we'll also be in the keynote on Friday uh, with James Gosling. Um, aside from that, uh, nothing. Uh, this, was, this was more of an opportunity. We're like, wait, make sure this weekend? Absolutely. So, uh, and we just play it by ear when we have opportunity. That's terrific. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am talking with Jim. He is the founder of Tech Shop. What is Tech Shop exactly? Uh, Tech Shop's a membership based uh, workshop that people can come and access all kinds of tools and equipment and workspace, as well as a community, and work on all sorts of crazy projects, whatever they have in mind. Uh, in terms of, is it a craft-based organization where you people can come in and basically uh, have access to what kinds of tools? Uh, we have milling machines, lathes, welders, sheet metal equipment, laser cutters, vinyl cutters, sewing equipment, plastic equipment, wood uh, stuff, uh, just everything that you can imagine. Is it, is it people looking to start commercial endeavors, or is it really just hobbyists, or is it a mix of all of the above? It's a mix of both. We've actually spun off a bunch of companies already where people use Tech Shop to develop an idea and test the market, and then they go out and actually set their own thing up once they've tested it. But there's lots of hobbyists, too. Nice. Uh, in addition to, you were mentioning CNC machines, uh, laser cutters as well. What are, what are some of the other more interesting, I think, items that are in use in the shop. One of the more interesting, unusual pieces is the uh, hot wire foam cutter. It's uh, a computer-controlled 
independent tables on the X and Y, or the, the two axes on the sides, with a hot piece of hot wire in between. And it glides through styrofoam and cuts out, cuts out the uh, shape. And uh, that's how we did all the signage in the, in the booth here. As far as teaching goes, hands-on, uh, is there any kind of instruction provided for new people that show up? Or is this something where, in the tech shop, you, you should have a good idea of how to operate some of the equipment before you put your hands on it? You can come in as a complete newbie. Uh, we've got a t- ton of classes that get people up to speed uh, in a couple of hours. And uh, then we have more advanced classes as well. And it's located where exactly? It's in Menlo Park, California. That was pretty awesome. It was a great day at the fair. Uh, a couple of follow-ups to the video. We just saw a, I believe that was Mark Twain Mark being Twain. lasered into tortillas. On a tortilla. That was pretty <laughs> What's cool. better than that? For the warship segment that you saw there, those ships actually were remote-controlled, obviously, but they actually shot steel pellets that were larger than BBs. Uh, we're talking, like, uh, chunks of metal were flying, and everyone there had to wear safety glasses, and the whole, the whole floating, uh, the whole pond was uh, protected by plexi all the nice. way around, but... They were truly trying to sink each other, and that that was terrible fun in my book right there. Uh, the biomass engine was that engine you saw running toward the end there. That was actually using a combination of basically basically taking all the waste material out of the process and being able to recycle it and uh, to make it a clean engine technology. That was pretty cool. One thing we didn't have in that clip, though, there was a band actually playing at the at the at the uh, Maker's Fair. And uh, I believe they were called Guitar Zero, but the cool thing was is that they were using Guitar Hero guitars, you know, like uh, on your game consoles where, you, you know, it's a, like a Simon Says type game where you're strumming along to the beat. They were actually using those, those play guitars in order to make real music, using synthesizers and other equipment as well. Impressive, and I'm hoping we can get that video for you online, so if you want to take a look at the whole thing. But anyway, I have to say... Uh, Maker's Fair is always fun. Yeah, I am totally the creativity involved bummed is, uh, that I missed that, that geekiness, all that good geekiness that weekend. That. And the you food. Know, <laughs> yeah, the food looked good. You know, I'm thinking we need a t- uh, Team DLTV battleship. That's what that, we need. I, that, was, that, was, that was a surprise to me. I didn't even realize people were out there c- creating warships that actually could blow each other out of the water. Yeah. That was... That's an alternative uh, <laughs> to video gaming that I think is like, yeah, I kind of like the whole model thing slash blowing stuff up. Anyway. Good stuff. All right, so, uh, <laughs> I gotta move on.